Hi, welcome to Icy Kicks. On today's show, well, we're reviewing something that I basically didn't really have any real interest in. It was sent to me for review and it went in the pile of things to review. That pile is getting pretty big. But after closer inspection, uh, I think we could have something a little bit special on our hands. There's only one small problem. Rilario, Riarilo, Rilalo. What's with the names? Oh my God, just call it Bonkers Fast version one. And then when you bring out another one, Bonkers version two. <laughs> but apparently on closer inspection, what's in this box could be something insanely special. Are we looking at the best new fastest little tiny basher buggy? Well, let's open it up and see what's inside. But I think this one's gonna be more special than you think. Hit it, Charlie! So on opening the box, I was pleasantly surprised because when I flipped it over, it all looked very familiar. It's basically an LC Racing EMB-1, which is one of my favorite buggies. So we know we've got a well-sorted chassis. And yes, all things like the shocks looked exactly the same. But one big difference when I flipped it over that I've never seen on any of those, it has a carbon chassis and not just a simple flat plate. It's actually got uh, curvatures in it. So they put a lot of effort into making this carbon chassis because it's got the uh, kick up at the front, the rear and at the sides, it tapers down. So that's not as easy as you think to make. It's not like they just and seed out a flat piece of carbon also you get carbon towers top and bottom not too sold on carbon towers because they tend to be fine and then they shatter and they're completely destroyed whereas if you get metal ones you can just take them out bang them back into shape and put them back in again also all this carbon i love all that it looks great whether it's actually going to save you any weight or not Probably not, but it does look cool and it's done in a really beautiful way. Also in the box, you get a manual, multiple languages, nothing super special in there. But one thing that's really nice is you get a breakdown of all the spare parts, which you definitely want if you're gonna have a small basher buggy. Then you get some actual extra parts. You get some dog bones, uh, two extra dog bones, you get extra arms, you get four. Now I'm not sure if these are different for the front and rear, I guess they are. So you've got two front and two rear. Also you get some hinge pins as well in there, which is nice in case you bend some. Then you get a few extra hexes, which is always nice because you can lose them now and again. Then you also get a big bumper. This is something I've never seen before. You can actually screw a large bumper onto the front of this buggy. I'm guessing because it is so fast, this is a good place to start. Saves you smashing it up. So this is a part I've never seen fitted to any car with this sort of chassis. The LiPo battery you get, according to this, is a 2800 milliamp, 7.4. So a little bit more than you normally see in the likes of a WL Toys, which is 2200. Uh, from a size point of view, it's almost the same, just a little bit thicker. You get a standard USB charger, which is gonna take forever. So you definitely wanna be upgrading your charger. You don't wanna live with just with this because it will just take forever. That's pretty much everything you get in there. And the transmitter. Now the transmitter, again, nothing super exciting to write home about. I do like that they've done this in the purple and it does feel nice in the hand. The rest of it is all pretty basic stuff. Uh, it does the job, but uh, it's not gonna win any uh, top quality awards. I do like the branding aspect that they did to it. That was a nice little bit of effort they put in. As for the actual controller side of it, very basic stuff. Right, let's turn our attentions to the buggy. And first thing I really liked, well, this spoiler's huge, but the, what it's made of, it's super flexible. So you're not gonna break that in any hurry. I like that, as this is really gonna be for bashing. 
Shocks are what we've seen before and they are fine. There's no issues with them whatsoever. Obviously they're oil. The body that you get is personal choice, not mine. I'm not overly sold on it. Do like the color they picked though, but I'm not really a front cab person, but it's personal taste. That's just the cover. It doesn't really matter really. Then we dive closely into the buggy and one of the massive selling points that I really like to see, look at the size of this. Now, running this is a 45 uh, amp ESC. Now, this is only a 1 14th scale, but it will run 2 and 3S. Running this on 3S will be absolutely bonkers, but uh, trying to find a 3S that's going to fit into this tray is going to be a little bit of a challenge. But the motor, yes, this monstrous thing here. Now, <laughs> they reckon this will do 75 kilometers an hour, which is 46 miles per hour. 46 miles per hour in a 1 14th scale. Yeah, this thing is rapid. Now it's got a 7 kg servo in the front, which is a three wire. So that I kind of like, you can upgrade that. Obviously having an integrated receiver and uh, uh, electronic speed controller is okay. You could obviously swap that out later on, but you'd have to factor in the price, but the motor they put in this. Now this is a 2847 motor, which is uh, 3,200 kV. This thing will rock it. It will absolutely fly. It's probably the most amount of power I've seen in one of these little chassis. So it's definitely going to be the fastest version that I've seen. But we're going to take it out and see how the chassis handles to see whether it can really take that kind of power. I do like that it's got a metal motor mount as well. Tire wise, uh, road and a bit of dirt. So it's a bit of a mixture. Uh, they feel fine and they've put this extra little purple thing around the actual hub um yeah i suppose it helps uh, spread the load a little bit less likely to just rip it clean out i guess but all in all it looks pretty nice so i've hooked up a battery so let's see what the servo's like that's pretty good to be fair i think that's gonna do how long it will last i honestly don't know but from a speed point of view i don't see any issues with it also, uh, so when you're talking about speed, what's up, Charlie? So Charlie was concerned that with this power, the diffs might not be able to hold up. So he said, open them up, see how greased they are and how good they are. So that's what I've done. I've opened it up and I can report there is lots of grease in there. I'm going to open up this diff, so I'll cut away so you don't have to watch me do that and we can dig into it and see what's going on inside. So after opening up the diff, there is oil in there. Only thing I'm a little bit nitpicky about is there's not a lot on the actual gears themselves. It's the same in here. This is actually quite dry and around this bit here. So there is quite a lot of sticky oil around, but not much actually on the gears. So I would recommend if you get one of these, it's definitely worth spending the 20 minutes just to open it up and add a lot more grease, especially when you're running this level of power, it's not gonna do it any harm to get a little bit more grease on these gears because they're gonna be pushed pretty hard. These are very small gears. So that's a lot of power. So you want to make sure to give them the best chance you can. All the diffs are back together again and it's all lovely and smooth. So next we're going to take it out for a bit of a bash and see how it goes. Can it really handle that kind of power in a tiny little chassis like this? It's a short wheelbase one. So I don't know. Maybe it might have been a smarter idea to go for the long wheelbase with this kind of power. But we're going to find out. Maybe I'm wrong. And then we're going to put it around the boot drag track and see what time it sets. This could go right to the top because it's speed and it's small and nimble, which is exactly what goes around the boot drag track the fastest. Right. Let's charge up the battery and take it out. Right, first of all, before we do some speed runs, I've got to make sure the steering is nice and true. Also warm up the tires a little bit and get used to the buggy and how it steers and how it accelerates before we do some full power run to see what kind of top speed we get. Now it is crazy hot in the UK. It's now nearly 30 degrees. So I don't know whether it's got anything to do with it, but uh, the maximum speed that I'm topping out at consistently is 30 mile an hour. Now I thought maybe it's to do with my battery. So I swapped to a different battery and I'm getting exactly the same 30 mile an hour dead. Now, the only thing I can think of is it's to do with the temperature being just that too warm. 
or it's I've lubed up the diffs and I'm getting more friction than I would have before, but I've kind of felt the car and it doesn't feel like there's any friction at all for me to lose a good four to six mile an hour. So I honestly don't know. Um, I will play around a little bit more and we'll see how we get on. So to give you some comparisons of the Rolalo speed of 30 to 34 mile an hour, I did the LC Racing EMB1. That's a brushless 4,500 kV, but a slightly smaller motor, it's a 2840. And that did 31 miles per hour. And another comparison is the WL Toys 124019. This is the long wheelbase, but basically the same sort of chassis. That's got a 550 brushed silver can motor, and its top speed was 32 miles an hour. So as you can see, the Rolalo is pretty much competitive. And if you could get that 34 mile per hour out of it, then it is the fastest of the bunch. So from a top speed point of view at 2S, it's up there with the best of them. I really wanted to do a 3S run, but as you can see, my battery is massive, but uh, I've got a plan. Yes, I'm sure this will work. It'll be brilliant. And uh, I fired up the GPS. Let's go see how bonkersly fast this thing is. Now people are getting 45, so it'd be interesting to see with this massive battery strapped to it. Obviously I've adjusted the suspension to try and offset some of that weight because all the weight's on one side. So this is mainly for fun, but as you can see, it seems to have made a bit of difference. Oh my God, it's fast. But as you can see, uh, it's a little bit out of control. <laughs> now this is the fastest run I did. And then I gave up while I was still ahead. Yeah, steering this monster. But let's have a look. 44 mile an hour in a 1 16th. So 44 mile an hour in a 1 14th buggy and it can easily keep up with the best in this class. So that's definitely a thumbs up. The range between the transmitter and receiver, not overly impressed. It isn't that far at all. So I would definitely be looking at upgrading the transmitter and receiver. Probably the first thing I would do in this one. Anyway, we've still got to take it out around some of the rough stuff and run the time around the Bugrad track. So we better crack on as time is a ticking. Right, so that's the Rolario and it did set a time around the track, but we'll come on to that in a minute. So let's go over some of the pluses and the negatives. The pluses are it's very rugged. I ended up spending more time jumping it than trying to set time around the track. I'll come on to why in a bit. And it handled it and it's kind of perfect for jumping and kind of bashing on a little bit, nothing too crazy, but in the garden with a couple of ramps, it will do that all day long. Love the chassis. I think that's one of my favorite parts. I am a big carbon fiber fan and I do appreciate the extra work that goes into getting one that's got all the correct bends in it and angles that are needed. It's not just a case of cutting it out of a flat bit of carbon. 
So that's really, really nice. So much so, I wanted to keep it nice. I actually made a cover for it while I was drum driving it. But if I was gonna drive this uh, a lot, I would definitely put some kind of protective film over it to try and keep it nice. Because if you take it to a skate park or anything like that, you're gonna scuff, or you're driving it out on the road and you're jumping it properly, you're gonna scuff the life out of that. Whether it matters or not, man, it's personal choice, but I like that to be really nice. So I would definitely put some actual uh, protective film over it. But what else is really nice? The motor. The motor in this is brilliant. For the size and the power it dishes out, it, unbelievable. 3S, 45 mile per hour in a car like this is crazy. So love the motor, great choice. Does run a little bit warm, so I would probably be looking at putting some kind of heat sink on it as well. Um, Carbon uprights, I do like them, but if you're going to bash quite heavily, you may end up wanting to swap them out for metal ones just so you could bend it back again, because I'm pretty sure eventually you will shatter these one way or another just by landing awkward. But getting metal ones for these would be super easy as they're on loads of other uh, versions of it. The spoiler, yes, again, stayed, uh, st stood up to a lot of abuse and didn't break, so I really like that, adds to the toughness of it. Um, the travel of the suspension is quite long as well, so it's kind of perfect for jumping and being that it's quite light. So on that front, I think they had a great success with it. Negative sides of it for me, not overly sold on this look. I know it kind of follows on from a few other buggies that have been out. Personally, not for me. But that doesn't really change much. Putting different bodies on it would be really easy. Do like the color combo they did, mind. Um, other negatives, the steering servo, not that great. Didn't really send, wandered a lot. When we were doing setting times around the track, you need precision and it, it just wanders a bit. Doesn't return quickly, then it will oversteer a little bit. And, uh, so for going around the track, it was frustrating to drive because it was just a bit all over the place. The control aspect of it was real challenge because it's got so much power. Also, I found the way it delivers that power, thanks to the ESC, it kind of drives like it's got turbo lag. So you go slow and then it gives you everything. It's like, it, it's not like, you speed up it's go like that and then it just goes crazy so that i think is down to the esc the way that it delivers the power to the motor so the esc combo that's in it i think is the fundamental flaw as well that and the servo the, the range of the actual transmitter receiver is poor and being that the way it delivers the power, it didn't feel very good. It felt very out of control. Like, you know, you couldn't build up really nicely. It was just, and then it would squirrel the, you know, so trying to set times around the track was insanely frustrating. So I would look at it more as just playing in the garden uh, with a couple of ramps and jumping. That's what this is really good at. Trying to set out a quite a detailed course and trying to set times not with the electronics that are in this. Not that I don't think it could do it, but then the other side of it is if you've got all that power, having the longer wheelbase, I think it would give you a bit more control. So if you're looking for something to go around a track, this is probably something not worth looking at. Go for the long wheelbase one. Um, I'm guessing that they will bring out a long wheelbase one. That might be the way to go in the future if you want to go around a track with a bit more detail, as this is just loads of power and completely out of control. <laughs> but that said, it did set a time and it set it in 13.23 seconds. 13.23 puts it behind the Schumacher Cougar, which is surprising being that that's one tenth, but having all that power with very little control slowed it all down. So what stays at the top is the top cap at 13.1.